You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Word of the Lord. Jim's over here with you, and so glad that you are, have uh, stayed uh, tuned in with us. Hope you enjoyed uh, the program before us, if, and uh, if you enjoyed that, we hope you will continue to study God's Word with us uh, as we go through another hour of, of Bible study. This is Word of the Lord. I'm James Ophiel, and here's my contact information, uh, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me, and I appreciate all you who are watching online. We're trying to stream to you and put it up on YouTube and various ways to get you to uh, uh, have access to our, our programs. And so we hope that you will take advantage of that. If you're in the Martinsville area, H-23 Starting Avenue in the Danville area, 120 American Legion. And, uh, of course, in Eden, we are at 250 the Boulevard, and we hope you'll come out and study the Bible with us anytime you have a chance. Uh, we meet on on, um, on the Boulevard. We're meeting uh, Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible class, 10 a.m. for worship, 7 p.m. on Thursdays for uh, Bible study. And, of course, uh, the Brethren in Martinsville meet on Sundays as well. Uh, you can start uh, meeting with them at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings in Danville. You start meeting at 10 o'clock with them. Uh, on, and and uh, uh, Danville's Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Uh, Martinsville's Wednesday nights at uh, 7 p.m. And, of course, Thursday nights at, uh, at Eden on 7 p.m. So all kinds of opportunities for you to study God's Word, and we hope that you will take advantage of that very thing. Uh, tonight, I want to uh, uh, actually talk to you about uh, something being above the law, and that's where we're going to. That's where we're going to start. I'm going to just start with this headline, if we could. Here's a headline that appeared. Actually, this is kind of an old headline. It's, uh, I think, first of this year, maybe a couple months old. But it says, "Muslim leader uh, says if we are practicing Muslims, we are above the law of the land." Now that statement alone, that statement alone, just by saying we're above the law of the land, probably infuriates a lot of people. It just kind of kind of gets your blood boiling. I mean, who who do you think you are that you are uh, above the law? But let's go ahead and, and let's look at the article and listen to what he says. It says Dallas uh, Care Director, that's C A I R, and that stands for the Council for American Islamic Relations, and so they're trying to have better relations between Americans and Islam, uh, which I think is kind of interesting because Islam is not really a, a country. Uh, it's, a, it's an ideology, if you will. But uh, he, this is the Dallas director, uh, Mustafa uh, Carroll, told the world at a Muslim rally in Austin, Texas, if we are practicing Muslims, we are above the law of the land. Now, that to me, just on his outset, doesn't sound like a way to build relations with, with, with the uh, country that you're in. If you're in a country and you're trying to build relations with, uh, with the people of that nation, so you start an organization to, to develop relations, uh, I would think that the way to do that would not be to come out and say, we're above the law of the land. You know, the law of the land doesn't apply to us because we're, we are Muslims. So, therefore, the law of the land doesn't apply to us. And what this was, friends, this was an, uh, uh, an, an attempt to uh, get Sharia law come in, uh, come in to different communities, and it gradually would take over. Uh, recently, I think this was in Irving, Texas, uh, they had a, a, a court ruling. A mayor was kind of intimidated and, and told, you know, you know, we're we're not uh, uh, under the laws of the land, so to speak. And basically, the mayor uh, stood up and said, you know what? Uh, our, our law says no foreign laws are going to be brought in and we're not going to, you know, our citizens are not going to be under any foreign law. So that, uh, you know, nips or ex nays there, your, your Sharia law. And that kind of got them upset. But, but nonetheless, when you hear someone saying, well, I'm above the law, I don't have to do that. I, I would think that probably kind of irritates people, kind of irks them. But here's a man who says, well, you know, we are a, a religion. And therefore, we don't have to listen to the laws of the land. Now, the article went on to say this. It said, uh, it's just a note. It says, now, CARE, the, again, this is the Council for American Islamic Relations, is the same group that was classified as a terrorist group by the United Arab Emirates. All right, now, now think about this. The United Arab Emirates, which is a 
Muslim country uh, has has labeled this group a terrorist. And the Obama administration is fighting the United Arab Emirates to have them removed from the terrorist list because they, they have a lot of goings back and forth at the White House, okay? Well, now, this statement, the article goes on to say, this statement wasn't shocking to many people who have been skeptical of care and the push for Sharia law in the United States. Groups like ISIS have already proven to the world that many Muslims feel that they are above the law of the land. Otherwise, they wouldn't be committing jihad and killing their fellow man all in the name of Allah. All right, so now, again, when you see someone that says, well, I'm above the law of the land, I don't have to do that, that, that probably rubs people the wrong way, I would think. Now, it doesn't have to be about Muslims either. You know, I think most people can recognize that if a policeman's out here, you know, and we've all heard stories or seen them on YouTube or whatever, you know, the policeman, he flips on his lights and he goes flying through the intersection just so he can get down to the donut shop or somewhere else, you know, where he wants to go and he cuts the lights off. It's not an emergency. Well, why did he do that? He's using the law. He's using the law for his own benefit. So he's, really he thinks he's above the law. Or we've all heard, heard, heard stories about uh, policemen, and I'm not really trying to pick on policemen here, but, uh, you know, policemen that drive drunk and they're, they get pulled over and when they find out, uh, when the officer who pulls them over finds out, well, you know, you're a fellow police officer, well, we're going to give them a pass. Or maybe you're the son or the daughter of someone that we know. Uh, we'll give them a pass. Maybe a politician. You know, politicians get passes all the time. Uh, they're, you know, well, you know, we'll just say that you're on your way to an emergency and so we'll give you a pass. And so I think most people, the common individual, looks at scenarios like this and says, why, why do you, you know, why do you get to be, to, to be above the law? Why does the law not apply to you? Why, what makes you so special? Who do you think you are that you are above the law? Now, friends, I think when we see this, when we see this in politics, and we see this in uh, uh, situations like with Islam coming in, and most people, and by the way, uh, uh, the, the lesson that I've done on uh, Islam the past uh, last month or so, a lot of people have been wanting copies of those. If you'd like a copy of those, I'd be glad to give those to you. Just give me a, uh, uh, a ring or 276-340-2653 or word in the Lord at gmail.com. be glad to get you a copy of those. Some of you are still waiting on them, and I appreciate your patience with that. But... Uh, most people, when they see things like this, when it is with Islam, they say, yeah, those people don't deserve, they're not above the law. Who do they think they are? You know, they're, they're, not, they're not better than anybody else. So when we see that in a, in a, in a daily uh, situation, I think we all say, you know what, yeah. But you know what, friends, have you ever stopped to think that many people who would, who would recognize Islam and who, who would recognize this situation with uh, Muslims coming in and saying, well, Sharia law is what we go by, so we don't have to uh, uh, adhere to the law of the land. I think many people who say that don't realize that they themselves probably do the exact same thing when it comes to God's law. Now, here's what you need to realize, friends. God's law it is above the law of the land. God's law is above the law of the land. Notice this in Romans chapter uh, 13. Romans chapter 13. Let every subject, let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be ordained of God. So you, you may think you're above the law of the land, but you're not above the law of God. And actually, the Bible says that if you think, if you think that you're above the law of the land, then really you're trying to be above the law of God. Now think about that. All right, verse 2. He says, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves uh, damnation. Verse 3. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou not then, will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same, for he is a minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, 
for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now, so the powers that be, the laws of the land, if you will, they are ordained of God. So if you're saying, well, I'm above the law of the land, then you're basically saying, I'm above the law of God. Now, I know with Muslims, they think that the Sharia law is the law of God. Now, I would challenge them to prove that. If they could prove to me that, that Sharia law is indeed a, 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 a law from God, from the Almighty, from an eternal be, deity, if they can prove to me that it is divine law, then by all means, it is a better law than the law of the land. But until you prove that, uh, excuse me, it's just another law of the land. And as a matter of fact, it's not uh, as good as some of man-made laws. But to say that we're above the law is really to say that we're too good to submit to the law. And we want to do things our own way. Isn't that really what Sharia law is all about? And so, like I said, most people, when they see this with, when, when it comes to Islam, they'll say, yeah, you know, they're just trying to, they're just trying to, uh, be above the law. They're trying to do things their own way because they want their, they want to, uh, have their way and they, they don't want anybody to tell them how they should operate or how they should live and so forth. But friends, I say you probably do the same thing. You probably look at the law of God and say, I'm above the law. Now, the reason I say that is because, let's, let's just think about it. How many times do people, how many times do people hear what God says and say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. Now, listen to what the Bible says. In Matthew 7, 23, Matthew 7, 23, Jesus said, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, who, if I was to take a poll, how many people think that Jesus would say that to them? I would dare say the majority of people who uh, profess to be Christians, who are watching this program, the majority of people watching this program, uh, would say, you know what? That's not talking to me. That's talking to all those. That's talking to all those murderers and thieves and and Muslims and boy, you know, just all kinds of people. That that that's what he's talking about. He's not talking to me. I'm a good church going first, and you know, I read my Bible every day. I've been reading my Bible for thirty years and so forth. And you know, I, I'm just you know, he's not talking to me. I don't I don't cheat on my taxes. I don't I don't drink. And well, I drink every now and then. Somebody might say. You know, well, I'm not a bad person. He's not talking to me. Friends, you know what I, I submit to you? I submit to you that the majority of people who read this think that it's not talking to them, but in reality, it is talking to them. And the reason I say the majority of people are the workers of iniquity is because, it is because of what Jesus said just a few verses uh, before that verse. Notice this. In Matthew 7... In verse 23, Matthew 7, 23, when he says, Depart from you, workers of iniquity. Look what he says back up in, in uh, verse 12 and 13. <clears throat> he says, uh, Enter ye into straight gate. I'm sorry, 13 and 14. Enter ye into straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And few there be that find it. That means the majority of people are going to be workers of iniquity. Because he certainly wouldn't tell someone who was uh, on the straight and narrow, who was on the way to life, he wouldn't tell them, depart from me, I never knew you. So that tells me the majority of people are on the broad way to destruction. The majority of people, therefore, are workers of iniquity. And you say, well, James, I just, I just don't know where you're talking about how you get that we're lawless then or how we're, we're above the law. Well, let's look at what this word means. Let's look at what this word means. Friends, do you realize that this, this statement that, that Jesus made is actually describing someone who would put themselves above the law? That would actually put themselves above the no, law or say the law doesn't apply to us. Here's the word that Jesus used. When Jesus said, you workers of iniquity, here's what he said. He said, he's talking about uh, the violation of law, workers of iniquity. It is illegality, something that's illegal. 
Now, you may be saying, well, James, I don't I don't break the law. You know, I try I, I try to make sure that I I'm a law abiding citizen. So I'm not above the laws of the land, not like these, not like these uh, 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 wild Muslims over here that go around chopping people's heads off. I'm not like that. I, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm not, I'm not trying to be above the law here. I'm, I'm a law-abiding. So Jesus surely is not talking to you, right? Well, this word, this word is uh, uh, kin to this word. Now look, at, you can tell the... the uh, uh, the kinship here, right? Anami, anamia, which is illegality, the violation of, of law or wickedness. And it comes from the word animos, which uh, means lawless or wicked without law. It's translated without law, lawless, a transgressor, unlawful, or wicked. Now, I submit to you, friends, that, as we've already said, the majority of people are workers of iniquity. And therefore, the majority of people are lawless. The majority of people are above the law. They're illegal. Oh, that's not me. That's not me. I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen. Friends, I'm not talking about the laws of the land. I'm not talking about the United States of America. I'm not talking about the laws of, of this country, Rockingham County or, or North Carolina. I'm not talking about the laws of the state in which you live. I'm talking about the laws of God that, as we've already pointed out, are above the laws of the land. But no one is above the law of God. And if you try to be above the law of the land, you're trying to be above the law. Trying to be above the law of God. But just because you're not above the law of God, uh, the land, just because you're a law-abiding citizen, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that you're trying to get above the law of God. See, sometimes people pacify themselves and they say, well, you know what, I... I'm a law-abiding citizen. I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to uh, 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 get around God's law. Yeah, you can be. You can be a law-abiding citizen. You can submit to the laws of the country, or the state, or the county, or the city in which you live, and still be lawless, still be illegal, still be above the law of God. So, well, James, I just I don't see how how you figure that. You know, how, how are you, how are you uh, uh, coming to that conclusion? Well, look at this. Like I said, no, no one considers themselves outlaws, do they? But here's the thing. You know, you can be above the law. You can be above the law of God and not even realize it. See? But being above the law, of, uh, being above the law is no different than, than breaking the law. Now, consider this. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 89. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 89. We'll pull this up here. We read both verses here. 1 Timothy 1, verses 89. Listen to what Paul says. He says, But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murders of fathers and murders of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves of mankind, for manstealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing contrary to sound doctrine according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which is committed to my trust. Now, most people are saying, well, James, I'm not a murderer. I don't, I, you know, I honor my parents and so forth. I'm, I'm, I'm not any of those things you just, you just listed, you know. Are you sure? Are you sure you still don't qualify to be lawless and disobedient? Listen. Look again, look again at what Paul says in verse 8. We know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Friends, have you ever thought about how? How is it that you can use a law lawfully or unlawfully? Now think about that. If Paul says if a man use it 
lawfully. That implies that a man can use the law unlawfully. How would you use the law of God unlawfully? How, how, how would that be possible? Well, think about it. You might use the law, a person, a Jew might have used the law of God in such a way that they would make it benefit them. Well, can you give an example? Well, here's a good example. Let's look at Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verses 1 through 9. All right. Let me get this, we'll get this phone call and then we'll come back to our text here. You got a word from the Lord? Hi, James. Hey. I wonder how many of the police officers out there on the forest go to church every Sunday. I mean, they're, they're supposed to be upholding the law, but if they don't know the law of the Bible, then how can they really obey the law that they're being teached? I mean, that, they don't have any boundaries on their law. Well, I mean, a, fellow, a person, I guess a police officer or someone like that, they could know the laws of the land and uphold those. But certainly we recognize that laws of the land that benefit people the most are going to be rooted in principles of the Bible. So I see what your point is. Certainly if you know the laws of the Bible, if you know God's law, if you know God's will, then you're going to be a better citizen or you're going to be a better uh, policeman or some sort of, of person in authority when it comes to the laws of the land. More equally, treat everybody more equal and everything. Right, right. I mean, that's, isn't that a biblical principle? Do unto us, you'd have them do unto you. You know, uh, um, you know the Bible is full of, of, of uh, verses that talk about a, a just balance. You know, being fair uh, in your dealings with your fellow man. Those are all biblical principles that if you carry them over and put them into a, a, a society, the society will be better for it. That's why, and really, uh, that's really why it's so important that when you're, you know, when we're electing uh, officials, public officials, that really it ought to be a, a good standard to say, you know what, I wonder how they hold up to God's standard. Because, look, when you put, you're putting someone in a position of power and you're actually saying, all right, we're going to let you make the laws. We're going to let you make the rules that govern us. Well, what happens if you put someone in there that has no respect for God's laws? What's going to happen is they're going to start. They're going to make laws. They're going to start. You know, the, the Constitution, I think, was made up of Christianity. Well, it was, it was based upon uh, well, biblical got, principles, got, no doubt about it. It got corrupted, and they separate the, the, the churches from the uh, government. And that's what's, that's what's so messed up in the country. Now. Well, and that's what I'm saying. When you, put, when you put people that don't respect divine law, then they're going to start making rules that will benefit them. And, and uh, you know, power is a pretty uh, uh, addictive thing. And so you start people making rules that will benefit themselves. And I think that's, that's kind of the principle that Paul's pointing out when he says a man uses a law lawfully. You know, so, uh, yeah, you know, it... it Getting back to your statement there at the very beginning was, if people, public servants, if they're going to be good public servants, it would it would certainly benefit society if those public servants knew uh, God's law, because after all, the Bible does teach on how to be a servant, the best way to be a servant, right? So, and I'd like to do a quick shout out for this Sunday. Everybody ought to go up there on the, the boulevard at Church of Christ and get the truth, uh, the real truth from the Bible at the Church of Christ uh, this coming Sunday. Well, and, I, uh, I appreciate that and hope, and hope you'll be able to make it. All look right, look forward you. to seeing you there. Okay, yeah. thanks for your call. All right, so, uh, so, so how can a man use a law lawfully or unlawfully? Well, look at this. In Matthew 15, there's our question, Matthew 15, verses 1 through 9, uh, then came Jesus. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? 
For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father and mother, let him die the death. Verse 5. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be, thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus you have made the commandment of God none effect by your tradition. Now, you see what they did? They actually made a law, a tradition, that actually transgressed God's law. And they're actually encouraging people to put themselves above God's law. Oh, well, you know what? If you'll just give a gift to God, then you'll be free from your responsibilities to your parents. Well, God said, honor your father and your mother. All right, so there's, there's, a, there's this idea that, well, we're going to make a law and uh, it's going to benefit us or it's going to benefit me and we really don't care what it does to the law of God. Now, again, some of you are probably saying, well, James, I, I'm, not, uh, I, I'm not making rules and traditions that, that put myself above, above God's law. Well, are you sure? Are you sure you're not keeping traditions that... Uh, negate God's law? See, man said God's laws did not apply in certain cases. And that's really what we're talking about. When you, when a man comes along and says, well, God's law doesn't apply in this case, or I'm going to do things that seem right or look right or look good, even though it means I'm going to disobey God on this hand, then what they've done, they've put themselves above God's law. You know, when someone says, well, I, I'm, I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to come to worship because I'm going to be out having a Bible study. Well, let's think about that. Is having a Bible study with someone, would that be good? Oh, yeah, that would be good. But the Lord also commanded on the first day of the week, you assemble with the saints. You assemble with the saints. So what, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to disobey God in order to obey God. Friends, it doesn't work that way. You can't say I'm going to disobey God over here in order to obey God over here. Do you think God's going to be pleased with your, with your so-called obedience to him on this hand when you disobey him on this hand? Someone might say, well, say, I'm going, to, I'm going to work on Sunday because I have to provide for my family. And I'm going to forsake the assembly over here. You think God's going to be pleased with you on this hand while you're disobeying him on this hand? See, you can't look and say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do what's good at the same time I'm going to disobey God. You can't say, well, I'm going to put God's law on this uh, uh, situation or this, uh, 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 yeah, this situation. I'm going to put it down here and say it's not really worth following. And yet I still love God. No, friends, it doesn't work that way. See what these folks were doing in Matthew 15 when they made a law or tradition. When they made a tradition that they bound on the people that made the commandments of God of none effect, they were putting themselves above the law, weren't they? Isn't that what they were doing? They were actually putting themselves above the law. They're making rules and regulations that would uh, uh, nullify God's law. Now, do people do that today? See, people say things, you know, they say, well, we want, we want God, uh, uh, we, we want to serve God. But they also wanted people to say, well, they're okay with God. In other words, they want to do things that they want to do in spite of what God said. So they want to be above the law. They just want to do what they want to do. Now, Friends, do you remember what we read in that article about the Muslim that said we're above the law of the land? And the article went on and said, well, that's what ISIS is doing. Everybody sees that these Islamic terrorists that are over here burning people alive and beheading people, they're doing it in the name of Islam, and they're saying we don't care what the law of the land says. Well, they must be think they're above the law. They, they do think they're above the law. But what are they doing? When, they're, when they say they're above the law, well, they're, they're doing what they want to do. Well, what about you, friend? What about you when it comes to 
serving God, do you have that same mentality? I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, what about this? What about this? In 2 Peter 2, verses 7 and 8. 2 Peter 2, verses 7 and 8. I want you to listen to what uh, what the Bible says about a man named Lot. 2 Peter 2, beginning of verse 7. And delivered just Lot. Notice they called Lot just. Peter says that Lot was a just man. Vexed with the filthy conversation, that's the manner of life of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now that word right there, that unlawful deeds, that's that's the word that we've been discussing. That's that lawlessness. That's, that's the illegal. That's illegal deeds. Those are deeds that are above the law or beyond the law, that transgress the law, that go beyond the law. Lot, it was just, but he was vexing his righteous soul by living in Sodom and Gomorrah around individuals that were engaging in unlawful deeds. Now, friends, what were they doing that was so unlawful? I mean, didn't Sodom and Gomorrah, didn't they have the, didn't they have the right to make their own laws? You know, I hear people say, well, you know, states' rights. You know, the state has the right to make its own laws. Well, according to the Constitution, it sure does. You know, a city has, has its right, has rights to, to, to make their own rules. That's right. Hey, Colorado, they have the right to legalize pot, legalize marijuana. Sure do. They got the right to do it. By the Constitution, they have the right to make it lawful or legal to smoke marijuana. That doesn't mean it's lawful. See, some people say, well, if a society says that it's okay, then it's okay. No, friends. Just because a society makes rules and makes laws and makes the law of the land uh, make something legal, that doesn't mean that it is lawful in the eyes of God. That doesn't mean that they're trying to be above what God said. Or that they're trying to go beyond what God said. What was, what was so unlawful about what, what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, we know what they were doing. I mean, we know the very thing, the very word that, that, uh, uh, that, that is still around today because of Sodom. Sodomy. They were engaging in homosexuality. And uh, if we go back and read Genesis uh, 19... Genesis 19 and verse 5, here's uh, the two visitors come with Lot, the two men, we know the two angels. They called Lot and said, or they, or the men of the city called Lot and said, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, friends, they, they didn't want to just have a you know, welcome party. This, this wasn't a meet and greet they were wanting to do. They wanted to sexually abuse these men. These were the men of Sodom. This is what they wanted to do. And notice this. And uh, uh, verse 9. And they said, Lot says, you know, don't do this. And they said, stand back. And they said, again, this one fellow, talking about Lot, came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal with uh, we would deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the do uh, man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put uh, forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were of the, at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So here's all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, smitten with blindness that were trying to break down Lot's door, wanting to 
wanting to uh, force themselves, force these two men that we know are angels, to engage in homosexual behavior. And the Bible says those were unlawful deeds. Now, do you think if Sodom and Gomorrah had passed a law that says, well, it's homosexuals can marry him. I'm sure, that, I'm sure there was a same-sex marriage law in Sodom somewhere. You know, I'm sure they went to the court and said, hey, we want, we want the, the same rights as married people do. You know? We, we, want, we want two people to be married. After all, we love each other. Do you think that would have made it lawful? It might have been legal, but it wouldn't have been lawful. Now, do you see what we're talking about, friends? People who want to do what they want to do are really saying they want to be above the law. They think that they are better than God's law. And that's why we're doing this all the time. We're constantly reminding people, look, you think you're above the law of God. And you say, oh, no, no, we're not. No, we're not. We're opposed to homosexuality. We're opposing homosexuality. Yeah, that's right. North Carolina, when they had a vote on it, 70% of the people said, no, we don't want same-sex marriages. And that was good. That was good. But you know what, friends? That doesn't change the fact that you still want to be above the law of God in other areas of life. Oh, no, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Well, what about this? What about this? In Matthew 14, in Matthew 14, we're talking about Herod and John the Baptist. Uh, John told Herod, notice this, Herod had bound, had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. Now, wait a minute. Herod had taken his brother Philip's wife. That's right. Herod took Herodias, who was married to Philip, his brother, and said, uh, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry my brother's wife. I'm going to marry my sister-in-law. And John the baptizer comes along and says, it's not lawful for you to have her. And Herod says, yeah, there is. Because, see, I went down to the courthouse, went here to the magistrate, and I got a divorce or whatever. Maybe I didn't get a divorce. Maybe I just wanted to take another wife. And so I went down and we married. Well, it might have been legal, but it's not lawful, friends. And you might say, well, you know what, I'm against homosexual marriage, but, you know, I I think marriage ought to be one man and one woman. Well, no, friends, it's not just one man and one woman. God's law on marriage is not one man and one woman. God's law on marriage is one man and one woman for life. And the people who have allowed the homosexuals to come in and, and say, you know what, no, the homosexuals, they're trying to be above the law of God, are the same people that turn around and think that they're above the law when it comes to marriage and divorce. Now, I saw some preachers down there at the, at the rally in, in, uh, in uh, Wentworth when it was coming about. And I wonder how many of them are going to preach against multiple marriages. How many of them have even themselves been married and divorced three or four times? For unscriptural reasons, what I'm saying. See, when it comes to marriage and divorce, we let people be above the law. We don't think anything about it. And my point to you, friends, is this. If you don't make a stand for what is lawful in the sight of God, then basically you're letting... People be above the law in other areas of life. Now, you may oppose Islam. You may oppose homosexuality. But are you, are you really going to oppose? Are you going to oppose uh, unlawful deeds and wicked practices when it came, comes to things like marriage and divorce? You getting married and divorced for whatever reason you want to? See? I was talking to a friend the other day and we, still, we got talking about drinking. He said, I'm, I'm against drinking. I, I don't think that's right. And I said, well, I said, you're right. I said, but here's the thing. How many of these preachers here in Eden, how many of these preachers here in Eden 
are not going to preach on alcohol because a lot of their members work over there at the brewery. And if they start preaching on, on alcohol... Boy, they're going to lose a big chunk of their ties. Not to mention the fact that probably a lot of their members, you know, are what keeping Miller Brewery going over there. Because on Sunday after the sermon, they're going to pop a beer and they're going to watch the race, right? See, no one makes a stand against it. And that's what I told my friend. I said, look, I said, you know, you know why we got such a problem we have? The preacher's not going to preach against drunkenness. They're not going to preach against alcohol. What are they doing? Well, they're saying, we're going to let you be above the law in these areas. We're going to let it pass. We're going to give you, let it slide. Now, is that any different than what the Pharisees and the scribes were doing in Matthew 15? Telling the people, well, you know what? We'll just have a tradition and we'll just make a little loophole in what God says. Friends, you don't get loopholes in what God says. Uh, put the phone lines up if you would, please. Uh, are you above the law? You don't think people try to be above the law? Listen to this. What about this? What about uh, what about this? In uh, recently in the news, recently in the news, you might have seen this, uh, Mister Creflo Dollar, Creflo. His nickname is Gimme. Creflo, give me a dollar. Give me a dollar. Ask for sixty million in donations for a new jet. Now I think that was pretty pretty nice of him because I think the jet cost like sixty five million and all he was wanting is people to donate sixty million. I mean he came up with the other five million on his own. You know, that was generous of him, wasn't it? But here he's asking for sixty million in donations for a new jet. Now here is what here is what the article, the CNN article said. Creflo Dollar is hoping a few folks will see fit to bless him. The minister, known for a prosperity preacher, at his Atlanta area World Changers Church International, is seeking two hundred thousand people committed to sow three hundred dollars or more to help achieve our goal. To purchase the G650 airplane. The figures were presented Friday in a nearly six minute video on the Creflo Dollar Ministries website and total more than 60 million needed to buy the Gulfstream G650, which goes for a reported $65 million. Now, the article went on to say the reason why he's asking for. 65 million airplanes because his other one, his other one is 30 years old. You know what? I, you think you think he's trying to find a loophole? You think he thinks he's above God's law? You know he does, friends. You know, you know why he wants that jet, right? Oh, it's to, it's to evangelize. Boy, I can, I can preach to a lot of people when I'm flying up in that Learjet, right? That Gulfstream G650. Woo! You talk about evangelizing. We could, we could do some serious spreading the gospel. Friends, I know, I know evangelists who've, who've preached all over the world. You know how they got around the world? They bought a ticket on a commercial airline, just like anybody else. What makes Creflo Dollar think he's above the law? What makes think him he, that he's better than everybody else that he needs a $65 million jet to fly around the world in? You know what? I, I think he's trying to keep up with the Copelands myself, you know, keeping up appearances. I wonder if, if Creflo Dollar... And his followers, I wonder if they think that he's above God's law concerning things like excess and covetousness and extortion or greed. Listen to what the Bible says. In Mark 7, verse 22, Mark 7, verse 22, look what Jesus said. He says, thefts, covetousness, 
wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, uh, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Do you think Creflo thinks that he's above that? Well, I'm not being covetous. Surely he thinks that. Surely he doesn't think he's being covetous. I mean, I wouldn't imagine someone asking for $60 million and in his heart he says, you know, I'm just really being covetousness. I'm really being, I, I, just, I, I just eat up with greed. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm giving into excess here. I'm just going to ask for $60 million. I can't believe in his mind that he really thinks that he is, but Friends, what is it? What else could it be? Listen, listen. in Luke 12, Luke 12, 15. Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things that he hath. Friends, when someone is, has the audacity to ask 200,000 people or whatever for money to buy a Learjet to evangelize. You can better believe they've got a problem with covetousness. They've got a problem with excess. That's what Jesus is condemning. But yet, we seem to be giving people a pass on things like this. You know, we, we seem to give people a pass. Benny Hinn reportedly had a heart attack. Now, the reports I read later said he didn't have a heart attack. He was just uh, stressed or whatever. He needs some bed rest, having some heart palpitations or something. But here he is laid up in bed for a week, recovering. The man who claims to heal people. The man who several years ago, you know, got people to donate money for a healing center that God later told him, Let's hold off on that. Of course, that was after the money came in. And then people still turn around and say, Oh, God bless you, Brother Benny Hinn. No, friends. No. These guys are above the law. They think they're above the law of God. They think they're above these laws that God teaches on excess and covetousness. In Matthew 23 and verse 14. This describes these guys. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive uh, the greater damnation. Do you think they're not devouring widows' houses? Getting these people to give them the last little money they have? All so they can carry on these lavish, luxurious lifestyles? All in the name of preaching the gospel? Yeah. They think they're above the law of God. They're outside the law. They're outlaws. They're illegal. They're illegal. You know what? When Jesus taught on these things, and there's a lot of people that are, that are that treat us the same way. We talk about the, the so-called chief apostle over here in Danville. You don't... Everybody's driving these big Bentleys, these, these preachers around here in their multi-hundred-thousand-dollar cars and the fine houses and tithing and, 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 and insisting that people give them money and send them money. The same thing happened to Jesus that happens to us when we talk about these things. Jesus was sneered at. They laughed at him. Look at this. In, in Luke 16, verse 13, Luke 16 and verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. This is what Jesus says. No servant can serve two masters, for he will either love the one or else uh, he will either hate the one and love the other, else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon is riches. That's what he's been talking about. And notice what happens when Jesus said this. And the Pharisees also who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. They sneered. Friends, these preachers, when a preacher asks you to tithe and give your tithes an offering, and every time the doors are open and you come in, they pass the chicken bucket, 
and ask you to put money in the pot. You know what they're doing? You know what they're doing? They're acting above the law. And you are allowing them to act above the law. Do you know why lawlessness continues? You know why, you know why there's outlaws? It's because people tolerate it. You know when uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, John Dillinger, back in the 30s, when John Dillinger was robbing, uh, robbing banks, you know, why he, you know why he went for so long? Because the public looked at him as some kind of hero. Here he was robbing banks. He was stealing people's money. And, and people just gave him a pass. Listen, when, when people are lawless, they're going to keep being lawless until someone steps up and says, Oh, no, you're not doing that anymore. You're not doing that anymore. See? It hurts a society. We should recognize it hurts a society when people don't stand up and say, no, we're going to behave right. If you let lawlessness uh, uh, take place, you know what happens to a, to a society? It, go, it goes under. Look, if, if, if you uh, um, have a store, you run a business, say Walmart or somewhere, if you allow people to shoplift, if you see somebody shoplifting and you don't say something about it, you know what happens? That actually hurts you in the long run. If a store keeps losing money, then pretty soon they close up and they say, you know what, this community is not worth uh, uh, having a business in because we lose money. And so then that business goes. And everybody in Martinsville is talking about how, well, you know, we're, we're out of a job. Have you ever stopped and think that maybe, maybe the work ethic or maybe the crime it's having something to do with that. The fact that people say, you know what? It's not really advantageous for us to put a business there. And so it translates. If you say, we're going to let lawlessness, whatever it may be, run rampant, well, eventually, you're going to say the same thing when it comes to religion. See, the same principle applies. When you say, when you say I don't really care if people obey the laws or not, then pretty soon you're going to be the victim of lawlessness. And it's just like when a preacher's telling you, hey, put money in the chicken bucket. Eventually, eventually it's going to hurt you because you're letting him take advantage of you. And that's why we're standing up here going, no, you, you, you can't do that. Because when someone thinks that they are not accountable, when someone thinks that they are not accountable to the, to the law of God, then what they're going to do is they're going to think they're above the law. And here we are. We're the kind of people that are trying to get people to realize you just can't do what you want to without being above the law. If you say, I'm going to do what I want to do, then you're basically saying you want to be an outlaw. Listen again what this man says. I know you've heard this clip before, but listen to what this man says. Talking about what church you're in. Uh, yes, I, I just turned on and been watching you program a little bit. And uh, you're talking about all these denominations and things. Yes, sir. We, <clears throat> we are not done. We know that denominations are not in the Bible. It doesn't matter who the, named them. The point is you're in something that admittedly is named by a man, but it's not in the Bible. Now, why would you be in something that God never spoke of? I mean, don't you want to be in the one that God talked about? You just show me. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can show me in the Bible, Old or New Testament, where the Baptist Church is. I didn't. I told you before. I didn't say it was. Then in why the, are you in it? We sit. Uh, Bible, I, don't, I sit down every day and I read so many chapters. Well, sir, every then, day. then tell me why you're in a church that's not in the Bible. Do what? Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? You can't. You can't. Well, I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. 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 That's it. Why are you in a church not in the Bible? Because I want to be. Why are you in a church that is illegal? 
That's above the law. It's outside the Bible. Because I want to be. Why are you an outlaw? Because I want to be. See? People say, well, I don't really care about what the, what the law says. Well, you're, you're, you're illegal. You think you're above the law. And that's the problem we're facing, friends. What we're dealing with, your friends in the Church of Christ are trying to get people to realize, you know what, you can't be above the law. This is the book that we're all supposed to be following. This is, this is the standard. These are the laws that we're supposed to be adhering to. When people say, well, I don't care what the Bible says. Well, what, what are you saying? You're saying, I don't really care what God says. I'm going to be above the law. Isn't that what an outlaw does? An outlaw says, I don't care what the law says. You know, you put up a sign that says, you know, gun-free zone. That doesn't, that doesn't stop the criminal. The criminal doesn't care if it's a gun-free zone. He's not concerned about the law. He's lawless. He's going to do what he wants to do. And the same way with religion. Same way with religion. You can find out what the Bible says, and someone's going to come along and go, I don't care. I don't care what the sign says. I'm going I'm to do my own thing. I'm going to be above the law. Friends, what happens to outlaws in the end is going to happen to outlaws in the Bible. You know, just like the Old West, outlaws always get it. You're trying to be an outlaw with God. You're trying to be above the law with God. You'll never get above God's law. Vengeance his mind says, Lord, I'll repay thee. What we're trying to do is spare you the wrath that's going to come upon all wicked deeds and unlawlessness when God returns, when Christ returns. Friends, our desire for you is to follow the Bible so that we can all be legal in the sight of God. Don't be above the law. Submit to the law. Submit to the will of God. If we can assist you in any way we can, here's our content information. want to uh, encourage you to uh, let us be assistant to you in any way we can. Till next time, remember, ask what does the Bible say? You always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night.